Next on IFC, the road of life is paved with dangerous curves. Sex kitten Bridget Bardot is the girl who drives all the men in San Tropez crazy except one, and he's the one she wants. Director Roger Vadim created a movie star and God created woman. Next on IFC. One week, 14 movies. Yeah, that's a good thing. Each one honored at past Whoa. Independent Spirit Awards. IFC's Best Fest. Six straight nights of the best in independent film. What? That's beautiful, man. Leading up to the Spirit Awards. The winner is you. Whatever you say. IFC's Best Fest begins tonight only on IFC. Tonight on IFC. Obviously, have this incredible knack for uh, picking what scripts you want to work with, and I wondered what things are the most important to you when you decide that this is something that you want to put your time and your effort in. I don't. I, I'm totally driven by the story and the characters. I mean, I uh, there, there are very good films that aren't um, really concerned with that necessarily, or at least isn't the primary concern of the film, and that's fine. But I have to uh, just respond emotionally the way. I would hope somewhere down the road the audience is going to respond. I have to be the first one to have that reaction. I am not sending out the message that our family will accept this kind of behavior because we do not, correct? Of course, but we don't want to push her away. She has to know that we understand what she's exposed to. How long you know about this? I'd like to ask the actors how it was having Stephen behind the camera. You know, often you work with directors and, you know, they're looking at a monitor that's about this big and they may be around the block and, you know, they come over and you say, did you see, are you sure you got, and, you know, oh, yeah, yeah, I got it. Or, no, I didn't see that. And you're never sure. You know, I, even when we were doing Out of Sight, Stephen used to sit right under the camera. So he was always really close. And for me, it just gave me a, a feeling of confidence that my director was aware of your performance. He was there. The impulse was to get as close to the performance as humanly possible, and there's no substitute for looking through the lens with the shutter going. It's as close to seeing it on film as you can get. And that really was it. I mean, I was willing to trade the fact that I'm not a uh, world-class cinematographer for that proximity. It's worth it. Yeah. What are they doing? They're arguing or something. It's two blocks. They could use the fresh air, you know? They're stuck in that piece of hotel room for two weeks. Oh, yeah. Let's just, just stop you know standing what? around. I'm going to walk. I want to walk. walk. Not because he wants to walk, okay? Good walk. walk. This could be the last chance to do this. Now get out of the car and shoot him in the head. Just shoot him. I was um, visually captivated by your choice of the different colors and technical style for the different stories. And I was wondering what the impetus was, especially choosing the colors to differentiate the, um, the storyline. Oh, it was really just to keep people oriented and, and let them know as quickly as possible which story they were in. Um, so it was all just driven by my desire to keep the geography clear. It had nothing to do with the emotionality of the characters, pre-story, or anything deeper? <laughs> um, you know, now that you mention it... Um, <sighs> so now that you have what you want, let's talk about how I get what I want. Oh, you don't have to worry about that. You're not going to have any problems there. Yeah, but first let's talk about what precautions you're taking to protect yourself. 
You worry about getting me what I want. I worry about myself. This is for Benicio del Toro. I want to ask you uh, how you got into your, uh, knowing that you're Puerto Rican heritage, how you got into right. your Mexican character. I went to Tijuana. Um, I actually went with a friend of mine and I, I spent some time with um, a retired police officer. We talked about the situation in Tijuana, not only for the accent, but also for the, you know, the state of mind of being an officer, a policeman in, in, a, in, in Tijuana, south of the border. And uh, I talked to him for a while, put him on tape. Um, and then I have a few friends of mine who are DEA agents that I've met from another show I did. And I talked to them, and they helped me out with giving me some information about what was going on in South America, especially Mexico, Colombia, and that whole thing. I was like they're conspiring to conspire. You know, I could feel the light vibrating from that home. Uh, uh, see that. Come on, I dream about this. I have actual dreams about this, about busting the top people, rich people, White people. people, I know. I noticed you had uh, three situations in, the, in this feature. How many situations do you think you could have placed in this movie and kept the intensity? I don't know. Three seemed to be the number here. I mean, this was based on a British miniseries that ran a little over ten years ago, and it, it's that that sort of uh, trinity of plot lines seemed to to work really well, and I wasn't anxious to change it. The only problem is in the development, there's so many stories to tell about this. Every tributary led somewhere interesting. At a certain point, uh, Steve Gagan and I just had to stop, basically, and say, we can only do this much. Okay, right now, all over this great nation of ours, 100,000 white people from the suburbs are cruising around downtown, asking every black person they see, you got any drugs? You know where I can score some drugs? Think about the effect that that has on the psyche of a black person, on their possibilities. I God, I guarantee you, you bring 100,000 black people into your neighborhood, into in Indian Hill, and they're asking every white person they see, you got any drugs? You know where I can score some drugs? Within a day, everyone would be selling. Your friends, their kids, here's why. It's an unbeatable market force, man. It's a 300% markup value. You can go out on the street and make $500 in two hours, come back and do whatever you want to do with the rest of your day, and I'm sorry, you're telling me that, you're telling me that white people will still be going to law school? The funniest thing that happened that's actually not in the film is uh, at the end of that scene, there's a part that's cut out where Michael says, uh, uh, you're really starting to piss me off. So he, on the last take, said, do you mind if I go uh, louder with this one? And I said, sure, Michael, you know, whatever. <laughs> and uh, you haven't lived until you've been yelled at at the top of your lungs by Michael Douglas <laughs> in a small, confined car. And, uh, and then afterwards, uh, Stephen says to me, uh, I think he's really pissed off at me. <laughs> we need to send a message. When Carlos Ayala hires Michael Adler as his legal defense, I send Ben Williams down to San Diego as the prosecutor. Why? Because it's a symbol. It's a symbol that we are sending the best. It's a message that we're going after their top guys. I was wondering if there's any friction on the set. Do people have different ideas about drugs in this world? I don't think so. There was a lot of discussion. I mean, one of the interesting parts about working on this film was the fact that everybody knows somebody who's been touched by this one way or another. And so I, I do remember on this film more than any other actually there being a lot of discussion about the content of the film and what we were trying to do. It just, I don't know, it lent itself to, to those sorts of discussions. Caroline, open this door immediately. Who is it? Who is the open that damn door! Right there. 
Where does it go from now, the war on drugs? Where does the storyline stop and the reality go? Well, we're in, we're in the middle of it right now. I mean, this film is as current as we could make it. We had two presidential candidates who didn't seem uh, willing to discuss their personal experiences or their policy. And the drugs are position of the cabinet is the only uh, spot unfilled by our new president. So, the, you know, our hope was that people would just come out talking about it. I don't even care if they slam it. The fact that they're talking about it means there's been a change. And so that was really all we were looking for. Next on IFC, the road of life is paved with dangerous curves. Sex kitten Bridget Bardot is the girl who drives all the men in San Jose crazy except one, and he's the one she wants. Director Roger Vadim created a movie star and God created woman. Next on IFC. Next, Martin Scorsese and Quentin Tarantino talk about the films of Sam Fuller in an exclusive IFC documentary narrated and executive produced by Tim Robbins. The typewriter, the rifle, and the movie camera. Next on IFC. When I first started out, if I was thinking I was going to host anything, it might have been a talent show in reform school. I was anything but an overnight sensation. They just got really mean reviews in the paper that said I needed psychiatric care. And my first films were financed by my father. If you have any parents or any relatives that have any money, be nice to them. Everybody's looking for an edge. That seems to be the joke in Hollywood. It's the last thing they really want. I sometimes like cliched Hollywood movies. What's a better movie than Showgirls? I don't watch movies on video. I see them in the theaters where you pay to see them with real people. Well, if you're going to embarrass yourself at the Independent Spirit Awards, I think you have to do it big time, you know? Um, vomiting might be good. You have to think of the new way to surprise people. So vomiting at a public event, going down the red carpet is generally a way to humiliate yourself. IFC's got the most bang for your buck. Director Robert Rodriguez became a medical lab rat to raise the money. And while undergoing tests, he wrote the script. Then he dragged his cast to a Mexican border town where he shot, directed, and edited the film in 14 days for, get this, 7,000 bucks. This promo costs more than that. El Mariachi, Wednesday on the Independent Film Channel. Welcome to Panama. From director John Borman, the tailor of Panama is a mind-blowing spy chase. I want out. An intelligent, intriguing, and sensual thriller. Spying on his own wife. Wickedly clever. I'm gonna stop it and my store up. Really? Pierce Brosnan is perfectly sexy. Gotcha. And Academy Award winner Jeffrey Rush is brilliant. The tailor of Panama. It's a game. Let's have some fun. Based on the novel by John Le Carre. Rated R. Starts March 30th in select cities. One week, 14 movies. Yeah, that's a good thing. Each one honored a past yeah. Independent Spirit Awards. IFC's Best Fest. Six straight nights of the best in independent film. What? That's beautiful, man. Leading up to the Spirit Awards. The winner is you. Whatever you say. IFC's Best Fest begins tonight only on IFC. Tonight on IFC. Tim Robin, Quentin Tarantino, Martin Scorsese, Jim Jarmusch in an independent film channel original documentary. This is how it all started right here. And all of a sudden, <laughs> about a man who paved the way for independent filmmakers. He lives. It started. Sam Fuller, an IFC original production, the typewriter, the rifle, and the movie camera. Coming up next on the Independent Film Channel.
Hi, I'm Adam Simon, and I directed the documentary About the Sea, which is a portrait of the filmmaker Sam Fuller. You may never have heard of Sam, but he was one of the greatest filmmakers of all time, and quite possibly the most influential. I personally remember really, really vividly as a kid one time catching his film Shock Corridor on TV. I had no idea who he was, but suddenly this film came on that was just the strangest, most powerful and twisted thing I'd almost ever seen. And it really ignited a lot of things in my mind. It just seemed like if a film like this was possible, almost anything was possible. And Sam had that kind of impact throughout his life on many, many other filmmakers, ranging from Scorsese to Tarantino, Godard, Wenders, Spielberg, John Woo. Almost every major filmmaker of our time in some ways has been touched by his work. So when Tim Robbins came to me a few years ago and invited me to make a portrait of Sam Fuller and go in search of him and go to see him, we really leapt at the opportunity to introduce him to a generation that had probably not seen his films, even though they had seen many, many films influenced by him. So I hope you'll enjoy the typewriter, the rifle, and the movie camera. Thanks. Nice.